Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about pitching. If that's always been a nightmare for you, with the help of the position, you're gonna find it simple. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about pitching, something which has probably been a bugbear for many hobby golfers over the years. Put a bunker in front of you and it all gets very, very exciting, doesn't it? And the reason for this is simply you don't have confidence in your technique. And this is something that the position in the golf swing is going to help you with. If you haven't been following the channel, the position is a place where we see all tour professionals shortly after impact, their hips rotated, their trail shoulder down and their hands out ahead of them with the club still behind the hands just after impact. By doing this, they're getting an awful lot of control over club face and this control of a club face is giving them real consistency in direction. It's also something because the, the movement is limited, that's also giving you very, very good distance control. So it's just a question of practice. And obviously, if you have a tendency to spoon or flip your hands through impact, it's a good idea to practice with some kind of shaft extension, whether it be the TRS or just an alignment stick which you're holding your hand at the same time. It really feels a little uncomfortable to start off with and get used to it in no time at all. Um, when you're taking your address position, I want you to get your legs and your hips back to square. You can stand shoulder width, but I usually stand a little bit narrower. You can put a little bit of weight into the lead side, but I will usually start with weight in the middle. The main reason for this, especially for hobby golfers, is when you're taking your backswing, you're probably going to get some hip rotation going on, whereas in the chip movement you didn't. And therefore it's probably a good idea not to have the hips open too far in the address position. Once you actually have that, then you're going to take the golf club back you can see my hand starting again opposite the lead thigh. You're going to take the club back as you started every swing. The shoulders turning, the arms lifting. The difference between this and the chip, of course, is that we are then going to allow the wrist to hinge. And how far we take the club back and how much that we hinge the wrist is really dependent on the distance of the shot that we have and the club that we've chosen for the shot. But usually you will be quite, quite okay really with a feeling of a half swing. And this is really just a mini version of the golf swing. We're not doing anything experimental here. The main difference is really start in the follow through. And if you've been following my kind of move towards the transition, trans, uh, the, this position, then what we've been working on really is getting to the top of our backswing, wherever that may be, getting this slight kind of release of tension in the legs, and then getting the legs to push the hips around. As the hips are being pushed around, the trail shoulder is going down, the lead shoulder is going up, and it's this kind of bowing of the body which is helping you to keep the club coming down on plane without it getting too steep or too flat. And at the same time, you are keeping your hands ahead of the club despite the relatively slow forward swing speed and that's keeping control and what we call like tension on the shaft which means that you're simply in control of club face as it goes through the golf ball. The big idea here of course is to get through this position. We've talked about a station on a railway, you're going through this local station and up to your end position and when you get to the end position you want the feeling of both arms being straight and the club basically rolling around your wrists into this almost vertical position that we see with uh, uh, Mr. Fleetwood around the body and then up there on the other side. If you can keep your spine angle during the shot and into the finish position, then all the better because that means there's absolutely no chance of variation in your distance from the ball and you have no worries about topping or hitting it fat. It's really strange that this is going to cost you far more energy than maybe your old method has done in the past, but it's going to give you far much more consistency. Again, as I showed you with the other clubs, you want to try and get a feeling for this without a golf ball. And once you have the feeling, 
you go into the golf ball and don't think about it at all. Just do it. It's gonna let take a little time like everything else to get the trust, but trust is built on success and success comes through practice. So again, it's all about practice here. If you do the work, you'll be surprised how quickly the results come. Very simple little chip or a pitch movement. You see it produces a nice high ball flight because we've got lots of loft on the golf club in impact. And at the end, looks quite good, doesn't it? As ever, if you liked it, hit the, the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. The little bell will give you notifications the next time I post a video. We'll be back very soon. Keep well. Bye-bye.